Hi everyone, welcome. Two days of frustration, uh, kind of four days of getting used to it, and maybe a week of normal operation. That's the new Fitbit Inspire HR. Time for my review about it. Welcome back, my name is Michael, it's the Tech for Road channel, the place where we inspect cool tech and I believe we don't really need to get introduced to Fitbit because it's a popular enough company like um, top three in terms of market share globally about smartwatches and fitness trackers, especially in the United States they have a huge market share and well a very big portion of the Chinese smart band and smartwatch gimmicks just try to look like Fitbit. But here we are seeing Fitbit struggling a little bit in the last months because of the invasion of other more affordable fitness trackers. And over here we can think of the Mi Band 4 or the Honor Band 4 or Huawei Bands and so on. You know, devices which are pushing the boundaries and the maximums of the price quality ratio. Fitbit seem to have acknowledged that and the Aspire HR costs around $100 or Euro which is way more affordable than what Fitbit devices used to cost in the past. We can see a lot of claims that you get the best from the company's technology and the most affordable price ever, but it still costs three times more than the brand new Mi Band 4, which unlike Fitbit actually has a colorful screen, in a matter of fact a very good display, but that's not going to be a review about the Mi Band 4 and it's not going to be a comparison review because we don't want this device to steal the show from the Inspire HR who want to pay special attention to it. In this review I'll pay more attention to the hardware specifications, the overall build quality, the functionality and the features, of course the smartphone app, and here and there I'll make sure to share from my experience that I gained in the last few weeks of using the Inspire HR. First of all, this tracker is about good quality. From the box up until the last piece of paper, the Inspire HR shows quality, polished design and apparently the best from the broad experience of Fitbit. I'm unboxing the black version with support for continuous heart rate measuring. There also is the non-HR version for $69 and in my opinion releasing an expensive fitness tracker without heart rate for almost $70 in 2019 makes it sort of dead on arrival, no matter the brand. Two strap lengths and the charging dock, this is what is included in the box besides the user manual, but you're gonna see a bit later that the smartphone app is good enough to teach you how to use it. The display is touch, grayscale OLED and how to see outdoors in daylight. I have to say that thanks to the well-designed watch faces, it still is better visible than other trackers, but it's far away from being great. And there seems to be no way to control the brightness intensity. Covered by glass, there's a 3-axis accelerometer, optical heart rate monitor and battery, which capacity is not disclosed, but is good for usage between 5 and 7 days. The band is made of premium comfortable silicon, and what I like the most is the placement of the heart rate sensor. There literally is a bump where the sensor resides, which is a little unusual for most fitness trackers, but it's a great idea because even with loose strap the sensor will likely remain in contact with your hand and will maintain measuring the pulse. No need to mention that the overall build quality is superb. You can always look for adding some freshness to the design by getting a new band. There are plenty of them, both original branded and third-party more affordable solutions. And quick release mechanism is in place too. Waterproof for swimming, and this is another attraction. And one way or another it's something very expected and a kind of a standard for the bands in 2019. Now, let's move on to the software side and the navigation features. The button on the left side is home button or back button if pressed shortly and with long press you go to the quick settings where you can disable notifications or stop the lift to light feature in order to extend the battery life. The touch screen will switch between the modes via tapping and that's how you can see the steps or heart rate or distance covered typical navigation for a 2019 model and it's well working here. Swipe down for reaching to the sports modes. We have running, biking, swimming, essentially whatever you choose is included and it's a few taps away. 
The convenience of starting a physical exercise from the band is unmatched. It will, of course, need the assistance of your phone if there is GPS tracking needed, like for outdoor cycling, but it's so nicely implemented. On the other side, the smartphone application was giving me hard time in the weeks of usage, and I've had three major issues during this period. Remember that I started the video with saying that I had two days of frustration? Well, one of the biggest troubles I found is that when trying to use, for example, the outdoor cycling mode with the GPS assistance from the phone, the connectivity between both drops and during the whole time I was getting the message that the GPS was disconnected and therefore from a 20 kilometer cycling route I managed to record like a few hundred meters which was kind of nonsense. Furthermore, in my opinion, the current firmware has very inaccurate algorithm about the accelerometer and the measurement of steps is way of being accurate. Like uh, it's measuring and counting steps if I'm driving, if I'm riding the scooter, if I'm riding a bicycle. Often the values are twice higher than my daily routine and this is quite disturbing. Fitbit have added nice animation about reaching, for example, 10,000 steps, but for most of the days this achievement was too far from the reality. The third really serious issue is with the heart rate and you can see it in real time on the screen, but it took three days for the app to actually start recording it and this has really frustrated me. But finally I can say that the advertised 24-7 monitoring finally is working well and the data is now visible on the smartphone app. Speaking of which, and if we put all the problems noted so far aside, it's really good. Moreover, Fitbit make you use a combination between the app and their official website where you can customize your profile, you can do some other additional configurations from the web directly and they get applied to the app respectively to the watch, so the ecosystem seems to be well working. Possibilities with the app are countless. On the main window there's a summary with your current activity, the steps estimation, distance and calories burned. I'm particularly impressed with the sleep tracking, very well presented in understandable fashion. The thing which is really great is that the band is smart enough to find out when you start doing sports and without starting an activity, it checks that on its own and measures the data. The app can be used as a data manager as well, giving ability for food consumption, water consumption, so you can trace your nutrition habits and everything is on the main screen and is configurable so you can customize your life habits. Fitbit have apparently thought about the smallest details like the possibility for transliteration and there even is encryption. So here we are at the summary time with the Fitbit Inspire HR and my relationship with it which was more like a love-hate relationship. Not sure how you feel about tech devices but once I lose trust in something it's very difficult to regain it but hopefully that's going to happen. I believe it works brilliantly well with an iPhone, but with the Poco F1 they didn't come along too well. I've had numerous issues, um, never managed to properly run notifications, although everything is allowed and accessible, it constantly tells me that the notification service is not running, which I still don't know why. But there we are, uh, very, very good hardware, brilliant build quality, perhaps the best in class at uh, that price range software which is still not too good and the firmware which I believe is very inaccurate at least in terms of counting the steps um, and the band connectivity to the phone's GPS and some other little issues here and there. So in my opinion Fitbit should have done a much better job demanding $99 for this fitness tracker. So now it's your turn to tell me about your opinion. Would you would you wait for a few weeks and then buy it because it's an awesome device or you prefer to go for something more affordable like the Mi Band 4 or the Honor Band or whatever other kind of cheaper band? Maybe you can let me know what your thoughts about these are. Also, please support the channel using any of the affiliate links which are listed in the description below. As long as there are updates and fixes to any of the problems I've mentioned, I'll make sure to reflect them in the description again somewhere below use this toolbar. It's a nice feedback toolbar. Like, dislike, subscribe, share, whatever you enjoy doing. It's going to be of great value to me and thank you in advance for that. My name is Michael 
and I'm so much looking forward to see you in the next episode. Bye!